I'm just gonna keep ranting about it. I'm having a bit of an existential editing crisis. Basically, lots of work to do on the maze. Ah! That is deeply devastating to me. But here's the most bullshit part. What's up YouTube, my name's Keelan. Welcome back to my channel. And today we are going to be doing another writing vlog. I'm going to be looking at my developmental letter that was provided by my editor and really try and sort out all my thoughts with regards to editing because I'm having a bit of an existential editing crisis. So that's the goal today is to kind of pull myself through this crisis and come up with a plan to get this thing done. So I just finished having breakfast and while I was eating breakfast, I realized some pretty devastating, I mean, I say devastating, it's not actually that devastating, but some pretty shitty news that KDP, because of COVID, is not delivering proof copies or author copies to Canada. That's going to create some repercussions for my book. And the article, I forget when the article was posted, saying that they were no longer doing that at the moment, but I was on the forum where people were discussing it. And uh, as, as recent as July, July, as recent as June 13th, people were still not able to get proof copies to Canada, um, which is kind of a pain because you want to have a proof copy before you, sum you click publish on your paperback. And so what I was trying to do this morning was I was trying to take my cover and take the current draft that I have and order a proof copy so that I could, I, I like having proof copies, but so I could see how the formatting is. And like, I know I still have edits to do, but I, I do early proof copies, but this causes a big issue, right? Some other people might choose to, but I'm not going to put the paper back live without the proof copy. So I either have to order a proof copy to somebody in the States, like my cousins live in the States and then they could like express ship it to me. But the problem with that is that like shipping is slow anyway. So like it might take, I don't know, a week or two to get to their place. And then who knows how long it's gonna take to cross the border. My second option is I could release the ebook and the paperback separate, but I really don't wanna do that because last year I was kind of forced to do that because I had ordered proof copy after proof copy. And then when I hit submit on my paperback on the same day as the ebook, um, the paperback didn't go live because there was an error and it was this whole huge thing. Amazon's technical team had to get involved. They actually did some adjustments for me. And then the adjustments that they did were not good. So then I had to go back and do the adjustments. And that took like a month at least to sort out. Like I don't think the paperback was published until October. So I don't wanna publish the ebook and paperback not together again. So then the third option is just delaying the release date entirely. But like all of these different options, I have to like weigh the pros and cons. So basically all that to say, I'm in a shitty spot right now. And like maybe proof copies will open back up in July, but I don't want to, I don't want to like bet on that happening. It's a bit of a pickle. It's a bit of a pickle, but we're going to figure it out. And frick. Yeah, we're going to figure it out. <laughs> but this proof copy thing is a real bummer. Amazon, why? I do know why. It's important. It's because Amazon's <laughs> Amazon's like moving all their resources to provide essential shipments and essential services, essentially shipping of equipment and all that stuff. And they're not shipping non-essentials across the border because of COVID-19. So yeah, but here's the most bullshit part. Okay, wait, here's the most bullshit part is that in October, 2019, Amazon set up KDP, Amazon KDP, set up printing services in Canada. So if you order a book in Canada that is printed through KDP, it will be printed and shipped from Canada. 
but you you can't order proof copies or author copies from Canva. That's like the most, ah, that's the most frustrating part is that they sent out this big email being like, we're now like printing books in Canada. So when people order from Canada, like it's from Canada, like great. But what about the author copies and the proof copies, which basically like you order author copies so they're cheaper and then so that you can, you know, give them for reviews or giveaways or whatever it may be. But it's not cheaper for Canadian authors because the shipping basically doubles the price and then it's a, the price of a regular book. So I don't know why they're not pivoting so that their printers in Canada can now ship proof and author copies. Um, and I don't know why that wasn't part of their suite of services they were adding for Canadians back in October 2019. So that's kind of the thing that pisses me off the most because they have the ability to do it and they're just not. Oh. Anyway, I know they have bigger problems on their mind with COVID-19, but this was my morning. This was my morning and I don't know what I'm going to do. Anyway, I have to get to work now, um, but... I'm not happy. Okay, so today is just not my day because not only, and I'm shaking the table here, sorry, not only did I find out that KDP is no longer delivering proof copies to Canada, but Harry and Francesca from Too Hot to Handle broke up. And that is, that is deeply devastating to me. If you have yet to watch Too Hot to Handle on Netflix, I'm sorry, but I'm very upset about this. <laughs> oh, today is just not my day. I was very invested in them, um, although Harry was a shithead. So I don't know why I was that invested in them, but I was very invested in them because it seemed like they were going to make it, but then they didn't and I'm sad. And so now I have this whole KDP to dilemma to figure out and then Harry and Francesca too. Guys, obviously I'm kidding, I'm not that upset. But I saw that and I was like, ah, oh, how, how? But anyway, KDP, ah, uh, ah. Uh, I was actually just thinking about it this morning and it's just like, I'm just gonna keep ranting about it. But it's such BS because KDP prints in Canada. Like if you order a book, I know I've said this before, but if you order a book in Canada, it's printed in Canada and shipped from Canada. And it's been like that since October, 2019. Like why can they not print and distribute author copies and proof copies from Canada? And like, there's plenty other options for me to order proof copies. Like I could order proof copies through Barnes and Noble or Ingram Spark or Lulu, but like I'm not using those places as distributors. So like, even if I order a proof copy through them, it could, like I'm still not gonna upload it and click submit on Amazon or publish on Amazon because I haven't gotten the proof copy from that particular printer because each each printer has their nuances and their formatting and their covers, like the way their covers have to be sized. So like, I don't know what to do. Like, I don't know if I schedule things as planned and just hope that the proof copies open back up or hope that I can get a proof copy by shipping it to the States and then have them mail it to me through like FedEx or UPS. But that seems like a really big risk to take. So we're about to head out on a walk. It is hot as heck outside. So did a full like wardrobe change to shorts and a shirt. Anyway, I feel very summery and cute. I hate wearing shorts, um, but I'm gonna wear shorts to hopefully get a tan and then also, you know, just cause it's hot out. So I've done one loop. I do like loops around my neighborhood. I've done one loop and I'm going to do another loop. Normally I only do one at lunch, but I have some time before a meeting that I have at two and I only went for my walk at 1245 and I get an hour and 15 minutes for lunch. So it works out perfectly. So I'm gonna go for another loop but I'm listening to my girl Destiny's new podcast called Beach Whale Podcast or The Beach Whale Podcast, I forget. But anyway, I'll link it down in the description box below. It is great, I'm on episode two, I'm just binging, I listened to episode one, now I'm on episode two, obviously gonna get to episode three probably on this walk because they're, they're short, they're like only 20 minutes long, 15, 20 minutes long, but it is hot out, 
I'm really enjoying just like strolling along, listening to the podcast, and I'll leave it down in the description box below because it's great and also want to support my friends. So yeah, go have a listen. And oh, it's just such a beautiful day out. My, oh, there was a car going by. It's just such a beautiful day out and my anger at KDP is still there and it'll probably come back once I'm inside. But right now we're good. It is hot. Ugh. Work is finally done. It is 5.20. I still have more work to do this evening because it is a very busy week, but I am planning on joining some writing sprints later. But right now I'm just procrastinating a little bit and watching Jesse Elliott and Kelsey Sutton on author Brittany Wang's YouTube channel. YouTube channel. I don't even know what I'm saying. YouTube channel. I'll put a link to her channel down in the description box below. So I'm just watching them talk about serials. So basically like episodic fiction because that is something that I want to do at some point. So I'm watching that and then I'm going to be going for a run and then writing sprints which I'll also be using for work and hopefully I'll be able to get to my developmental letter then and take a look at it and really take some detailed notes. It is hot as heck out. I just finished a run and going for a little walk now to cool down even though I don't know if that's possible because it's so hot. All right, so it's about 10 p.m. and I'm finally getting to my developmental letter. So as you can see, I've already, I've already like written stuff on it on the back too. Some of it's also just random doodling but I'm going to read through my developmental letter and then I have my outline open or my scene by scene synopsis, which is a little different from my outline, but my editor went through and as part of their developmental edits does a scene by scene synopsis. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the information from here and put it into the scene by scene synopsis. So like I know what I'm going to have to move around when I jump back into my document because I've tried to jump into my document without doing this or I shouldn't say without doing this because I've already gone through and done this once but the only thing that I did was I added in scenes that I thought needed to be added or taken away. So I didn't go through and like get into that much detail and that's what I'm going to do right now because I think this will really help me move forward in my developmental edits because like my developmental edits based on my editor's feedback because she did a lot of work on characters because I feel as though characters are the point that I need to improve on the most. So I asked her to take a deep dive into that. And so basically half of my developmental letter is about characters, but like to better I don't know, to better weave in character development and all that, you have to do it throughout the whole story. There's not just like one spot. So I'm going to go through and try and figure out where those things are and basically put in, in here like what I could add to each scene to, to improve. And for anybody who doesn't know what a developmental editor does or what a developmental letter is, it's essentially feedback on the like, larger portions of the story. So does the plot make sense? Are there any plot holes? Is the pacing correct? Like, is there anything that is like, is there anything that's not making sense basically? And then is there any big picture items that you can implement to improve? So for, you know, certain genres, maybe a developmental edit, if you're going the self-publishing route, isn't necessary but I write epic fantasy, so there's a lot of details that need to be absolutely correct. Um, and I've, I've personally found that a developmental editor is key to helping make sure that I have consistency throughout the story, that there are no plot holes, and that the world is as full and as lush as, as it is. So that's why 
I think it's very necessary. If you're going to self-publish and skip the developmental editor stage, make sure you do like beta readers, make sure that you um, do a developmental edit yourself. But me personally, writing epic fantasy, I honestly think this is probably one of the most important steps. And All the King's Traders would not be the novel it is today without my developmental editor and All the Queen's Renegades I know is going to be so much better um, once I implement some of these changes. So yeah, here we go, here we go. being on YouTube for a while, I'd know how to put a cam camera straight. Anyway, I am done my developmental letter read through. I thought there were some funny points that I was going to pull out for you guys. I'll link up in the cards a link to the 10,000 um, word day vlog that I did. But because for those who have not been following along with these vlogs, this might sound like a little bit crazy, but there was this maze that I put in the story and it's been giving me so many issues and apparently it's also giving my developmental editor issues too so i just thought that was great I'll, I'll read you a couple quotes from like the maze drama and if you want to go and watch that video then you'll understand all about the maze drama but anyway i thought that was super funny so i've got a few quotes i wanted to pull out from the developmental letter that i just thought were great about the maze for anybody following the maze saga. The maze, vault, and cliff are too complicated for readers to follow, yet too easy for blank and blank to solve. I blanked out the character's name. But yes, there's a lot of potential with this plot line and its climax, but it needs to be finessed. Yep, agreed, agreed. Uh, and then there was one more good one about the maze. The maze, the vault, the cliffside, and blank's lair could equally use additional development. Basically, lots of work to do on the maze. Another piece I wanted to pull out for you guys because I was I was really struck. There's a lot of characters in this book. So I struggle with voice. And my editor is amazing. And she was like, I think one of the things that was really strong about All the King's Traitors is that each character had their own voice. And so because there's even more characters in this book, I, you know, asked my editor to look into character development and voice. And so she did a fantastic job, but she, she suggested me this exercise that I've never done before. And I, I'm assuming others may have done it before, but she said, there's a classic writing exercise to help with this development. For each main character, write 10 to 20 common words that that character and only that character will say during the book. Next, write five to 10 unusual words that the character will say at least three times during the book and that no other character will say. Last, write three expressions that the character will use at least five to 10 times during the book that no other character will use. This can also go for groups of characters, etc. So I found that really interesting because in All the King's Traitors, there is a particular expression that a group of people uses and, or several expressions that a group of people uses. And they, there are now other groups of people. And so they should also have their own expressions. So anyway, it just got me thinking. And then the common words was super interesting too, because in all the King's Traders, there are characters that say words and it's only them who use those words. And it's, a, it's like a, a trait that they have, or like, a, it's like a quirk, right? It's everybody has their quirk. They need things like that. And they have that in all the King's Traders. And then some of the, the characters who had it in all the King's Traders still have it in all the Queen's Renegades. However, some of the characters in all the Queen's Renegades don't have this yet. So I thought that was super interesting and I'm gonna go at it. Anyway, those are my maze woes. I thought that exercise was a super interesting tidbit. I've got all of my developmental edit letter in my scene by scene synopsis now. I've got a plan in my agenda because I actually have five days off work coming up, um, Wednesday through Sunday, I'm including the weekend, Wednesday through Sunday from June, one second, oh, my receipts just popped out of my journal. 
receipts from June 24th to June 28th. So Wednesday, June 24th to Sunday, June 28th, I'm off work. Oop, that was loud. I'm off work. So I'm going to be using that time to dive into the edits. And for anybody who's watched my video, again, I'll link it up in the cards about how to write multiple points of view. Um, one of the things I suggest is that you always go through and do an edit per point of view. So I normally write chronologically, which I didn't do with this book, which is a whole other thing, but the story is chronological. But now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take everything apart and work on each character's individual point of view. And there are four characters that I have significant work to do on their points of views. So I've assigned each one of those characters a day and then a day at the end to pull it all together and polish it up. So I, I think, I think I've solved it. I think going through this, putting it all in my, my outline and thinking about my approach is I don't think I can go through and edit this chronologically now. I think I really have to think about each individual character's character arc and story arc. And to do that, I'm going to separate it all out into the point of views. And again, I have that video about writing multiple point of views. And that's one of my suggestions is to always do one round of editing where you pull out the point of views. I normally do that round of editing further along. However, I think this is what my story needs right now. I really, I'm really excited about this. I was so lost, but I think that's the solution. And I don't know why it took so long for it to click, but as I was going through, I was like, I was one character in particular, I was thinking, oh man, this character's POV needs an entire overhaul. I should just rewrite the whole POV. And then I was like, oh my goodness, that's my solution. My solution is to go through and edit per POV now. So that's what I'm going to be doing. Don't worry, I'm gonna be vlogging all this. Um, so it will be up on my channel soon, but thank you so much for joining. I appreciate it. If you like this video, please make sure to like and subscribe. Subscribing helps my channel so, so, so much. And I just, I appreciate every one of you. If you want a writing group to be a part of and to make writing friends, we have a Discord that a whole bunch of us are a part of. Uh, it's called the Sprint Squad because we do writing sprints. It's in the description box of this video down below. So please feel free to join. Absolutely everybody is welcome and we will be so happy to have you. And yeah, please leave a comment down below if you liked this vlog type style video, type style video, I don't know what I'm saying. Please let me know in the comments below if this is the content that you like or if there is other content that you would prefer because yeah, and I've got, oh my God, guys, I have the most exciting surprise coming up for you. Well, I'm not sure if it's that exciting to be totally honest, but I think it's exciting. So it's coming up and you'll find out on July 1st. So I'm super excited for that and yeah, I think that's all for today. Um, thank you so much for coming along on this developmental edit journey. And also, KDP needs to start printing their books in Canada. <laughs> all right, thanks so much, everyone. Talk to you later. Bye.